Hi there, Psycho Enthusiasts, and welcome to another episode of Friday Psycho Best Practices. My name is Vasily Fomachev, and I'm a Psycho MVP. In this episode, I'd like to give you a walkthrough of the fields um, of one of the most commonly used rendering types, uh, the controller rendering. So there are many settings that Psycro provides us that we can um, set up by default to improve either the usability, um, improve the validation, or even performance of certain components in Psycro. Very frequently, I don't see them used properly. And uh, even once in a while, I run into developers that aren't even aware of certain settings on renderings, um, or just simply don't know what they do. And they don't bother looking, uh, looking that up. So uh, I decided to create this video. And uh, uh, like I said, we'll go through the controller rendering uh, fields. Uh, there are other renderings, of course, besides the controller rendering. Um, probably the second most popular would be the view from my experience and they might have some other extra fields but uh, since the controller is the most commonly used one we'll use that for the video okay so we'll start right from the top data section controller so this is the field where we specify either the controller name um, uh, so in this case that would would have been just marquee or the full name of the type with the library so um, as you see here in this example, we specified the full namespace with the type name followed by a comma based on the library name. Now I recommend doing that even if you're running a single instance Psycro website. Uh, there might be a, a case when uh, you run into uh, scenarios where you have to create uh, uh, similar functionality with uh, same action names, uh, for instance. Uh, however, if we were to use a uh, simple controller name in this field, we would run into the ambiguous um, action name error in the M M MVC. So um, that's the error that usually comes up on multi-site instances. Um, so let's say if you have a couple controllers having the same action name, uh, let's say a couple marquee controllers having this uh, same action name, you would get that ambiguous reference um, error. However, I've seen that happen in single instance websites, so I simply recommend using that from the get-go. You never know when you're going to run into something like that down the road. So just to be safe, uh, because renaming that, going back and renaming that um, uh, can be a pain, especially uh, if you do end up adding a second website. Um, so controller action, the second field, speaks for itself. So this is the action that will access uh, on this controller. So this is the action that will provide the functionality for this component. The next field down is area. So uh, if you are in a multi-site environment, areas is something you probably should consider using uh, for the multi-site setup. And if you are going to use areas, so this is where you would specify the area name. Placeholder. Placeholder field allows us to specify the default placeholder uh, for this component. Now I like this setting. Um, it adds a little bit to the usability of uh, the Psycho content editor. So if a uh, content editor um, adds it to uh, a placeholder where this component is expected to be by default, they don't have to go through that extra step of uh, specifying the placeholder as they're adding that component. Simply add it to the presentation view and it will be defaulted to this, for instance, in this case, body placeholder. And they would only need to specify the placeholder when they're adding it to a, a, a non-usual uh, area of the website, non-usual placeholder. Data source. So this is the start path, the start location um, uh, for when you click the data source button on the rendering. So all of our renderings, uh, sub layouts, uh, as you already know, um, already contain a data source button that allows us to specify the data source for the, for the rendering or sub layout. Right? So this would be the starting path um, uh, that will open up when you click the data source button. By default, it opens right at the top, the, right at the top of the content tree on the content item. However, especially if we're in a multi-site instance environment, this becomes uh, very important so we, um, so we can validate what areas of the website um, uh, users can access just in case the security isn't set up correctly. Anyway, so this also adds to usability. So users don't have to, or content authors don't have to browse through, through the entire tree. Let's say if the path to the, the parent item uh, or to where the, the, um, the items that this rendering would use are buried somewhere deep in the content, right? So this also adds a little bit to that as well. Parameters, this is where we can specify default values 
for our parameters on the rendering. Logging control. Now I believe this, this one is uh, one of the legacy fields. Um, haven't used it personally. Uh, I think it's one of the one of the older um, fields left from the uh, Psycho older versions. Now, if someone has more details on this field, please comment below. I'd love to hear that. Uh, now, the next section is editor options. Oops, minimize that. Editor options description. So this is a description um, that appears uh, for this rendering, and uh, it also adds to the usability of the uh, rendering. So when you're, uh, for instance, adding it using the experience editor. Parameter templates. Now this is the field that I like a lot. Now in one of my previous videos, you can check out the recommendation using parameter templates over um, simple key value free text entry parameters that come default with renderings and sub layouts. So this allows us to use Psycho fields uh, for adding parameters or settings to our renderings in the presentation layer. Very useful. Uh, open properties after add. This is another usability uh, enhancer um, setting. Uh, by default, it just said to default. We have a couple options. Um, besides that, yes and no. Uh, yes, um, if we set that to yes, so when we add the rendering, the uh, rendering properties window would open up immediately, prompting the user perhaps to choose the data source or uh, maybe specify some other settings um, in there. If we set no, that speaks for itself and default uses the default setting in Sitecore, which is no. Um, customize page. Now, I believe this one is also a legacy uh, field. And if I remember correctly, that field um, is the grandfather of the parameters template field. So don't use it. It's just there for um, backward compatibility. And if you are using it, Please switch to parameter templates as soon as possible. <laughs> um, editable setting checkbox. Uh, this um, allows us to uh, enables or disables the um, quote unquote editability of the um, of this particular rendering or component sub layout or rendering. Both of them have this checkbox. Uh, so what I'm talking about is if you're in in the edit mode and if this uh, checkbox is checked. You can hover over the component. You get the frame around it with a uh, bar with buttons for uh, manipulating for editing this particular component. If you have this unchecked, then you won't get that. Now you can still edit fields if um, if the content of the component is built for the content or um, for experience editor um, or page editor, how it used to be called. So you can still um, use that functionality, but you won't be able able to get that edit frame with additional. Um, uh, manipulations on this component in experience editor editing mode. Data source location. Now this is another uh, one for the usability. So this is the default setting for the data source. So if users don't specify a data source, so they just simply add um, this component to a web page without specifying the data source when it requires one, this is what it'll use. Also another usability improver. So um, in combination with the placeholder and this data source, we can simply add renderings or sub layouts to our presentation layer uh, without having to specify both if this is a, a regular or common um, use of the module. Data source template. Now this improves the usability and also adds a little bit of validation to the data source um, component. So um, this specified what kinds of what kinds of items um, can be used uh, as the data source for this particular rendering. So in this case, we can only select a folder as the data source. So that prevents users from accidentally selecting a, a different type of item. Uh, so adds a little bit of validation and usability. Compatible renderings. So this field allows us to specify renderings that can be swapped out uh, or can be used in place of this particular rendering. So these are usually renderings that use uh, the same types of data sources, uh, the same types of settings, um, or closely related to this rendering. So in this case, I don't have any, but it is recommended to set those up. Um, another usability enhancer uh, for Psych or for the Experience Editor. Experience Editor buttons. So these buttons I almost never uh, see used, but they're actually very useful, especially on things like, for instance, uh, our carousel rendering. 
So our QRSO rendering would typically, typically point to a folder with a list of slide um, items, right? So these buttons right here allow us to control the rendering itself and the items um, in uh, the location where the data source is pointing to. So in this case, we can move, them up or, uh, move the rendering up or down. We can insert a new slide, for instance, or delete. Enable data source query enables the data source query speaks for itself. And caching section. So this is one of my favorite sections that improves user, uh, the performance of, uh, of the component. Allows us to cache uh, the HTML output of this component in memory. Now I believe I have another video on this one. So for more details, check that out. But for a quick overview, this one is said to be cacheable. So it's always cached on all the pages. Uh, there are some settings here. Clear and index update, vary by data or data source by device, by login, user, by uh, parameters um, of the rendering, by the query string, or by user. Uh, there's a way to add custom caching settings. One thing I would recommend is to be careful about caching by URL. I know there are some implementations floating around online. It might seem like a good idea, but over time it can uh, backfire on you, so be careful. So there you go. Uh, so these are the fields of the controller rendering. Now make sure to Fall, uh, walk through all of these fields when you create a rendering. Um, that's what I do. Anytime I create a new component, I walk through all of these fields. Even though off the top of my head, I already, I might already know what kind of settings I, I would need to set up. Once in a while, I'll forget about one of these. Uh, but going through each one every single time uh, makes me reevaluate the rendering um, once, uh, once again, and and uh, uh, helps me avoid. Um, uh, not setting these settings properly, right? So uh, hopefully you liked uh, this video. Uh, if you have any other questions on any of these fields, please comment below. Again, comment on the login control. I'd love to hear from you guys. Where to go? Right here, that's the field. And for more tips like this, check out cmsbestpractices.com. Uh, and uh, Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, and I'll see you next Friday. Over and out.